Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. What you're looking at here is a frame, frame 350 actually, from the Patterson Bigfoot film. And this is one of the frames that first got me interested in this film. And the reason why is because it had been filtered uh, in order to try to produce higher contrast. Someone was using uh, uh, astronomy type techniques. And this was a superb image. Uh, so this is what got me interested. It drew me in. It drew my attention to the film. Uh, now, this is a, this has still got some artifacts left over. Someone had been examining it, and uh, they didn't erase or, or back out of their circle they made there. But anyway, I'm not interested in that part uh, anyway, so I, I, what I wanted to show you is uh, amongst the clarity of this photo, which is superb, uh, there's some details. And, and this this is why the shaky, grainy versions that were first shown on television uh, for many years, actually, uh, were a travesty. When this type of image actually was on the film, the first... The, the master copy of the film that you could get something this clear let me just kind of switch it over to my imaging program uh, there we go right there now I can kind of so this is monochrome it's filtered and it's monochrome but you can see uh, there's quite a bit of contrast between the hair and the skin texture and uh, a, a, a superb job of filtration. Now, this was a, f a frame taken directly off the master copy that was then filtered and improved. So you see the tremendous difference. Now, let me just show you some things. I'm going to just back off a little bit on this red, just a little bit. And then... Pay, pay particular attention to this. This whole eye area. Okay, look at this right here. And that would be her eye. Now, let me just, uh, You see, this right here is not the eye. A lot of people that have seen this said, that, well, this is the glint of the eye, and, and it's not. This is the eye right here. You can see a good bit of detail. You can see that this is the shape of the eye. It's almond-shaped, and this is the pupil. And this right here is the sclera, and that's the sclera. Uh, back off again. Let's see. Well, there she is looking at you. You know, uh, <laughs> that's why, you know, it, it seems a bit of a puzzlement that this film was taken in 1967, allegedly, if the story holds true. And I know that in 1968, John Green printed frames from the film. 
that were nowhere near this quality. Nowhere near. It was nothing but a dark silhouette. And I know for a fact, at least by his own testimony, that he had in his possession in 1968 the original copy of the film. So why didn't he show the good stuff? Why did he show a degraded image from the film, a degraded copy of the film? Those are all valid questions. Because if you wanted to invest yourself in this film, you wanted to say, yes, I support it. You got to have something to go by. If, if, you, if you go by the story involved in the film, uh, as far as how they got the film, their story, you immediately find problems. You find problems with the development of the film and the timeline of that development and how someone could come out of the woods go send the film off and then go back to the woods, get casts, and and then the film is developed and shown on Sunday and it was sent off on Friday and it's Code of Color 2 and only two places in the United States processed Code of Color 2. And it was not possible for Kodak to develop that film. In that length of time. So it, it ended up being very problematic. And this stuff like this surfaces. That's way, way, way better. Than anything out there that you've seen any time. So. Think about this. You know. It. The first thing that a skeptical mind wants to do is say, well, they, I found these problems with the story. I found these problems with the film. I found the problem. That must mean hoax. Well, no. Uh, hold on. This is why it can't be a hoax. Look at the muscles under the shoulder blades. Look at the gluteus maximus. Both sides. See the cleavage in between. See them moving independently. This is stuff that you know about. This is stuff you see in your life nearly every day or every day. So... When they tell a story that don't job, if it makes you think hoax, come back and look at this. Or even better, Look at this. Friends. This is no hoax. This is biomechanic biomechanics in action. Um So what about their story? Well, it, it requires some savvy to sort it all out. But in, in my estimation, you know, the story is, is a, more of a ploy. Uh, it's it's an, an attempt to, to preserve 
the event for these people without having to tell you exactly how it came about. And and, and they didn't cover all the bases. No, it, everything... When you when you examine it closely, it begins to fall apart. Yes, uh, but the film is still what it is. It's a living thing, and as good as this is, it's still a copy. You you double this in quality or more, or maybe triple it when you go to the master copy. And the master copy is superb. So I ask you, you know, in this 50th anniversary of the filming, to put on your objectivity. You know, there's a lot of things in life that at one time were seemed absurd. But we benefit and see them almost daily now. This right here, does it need explanation? Yes, it does. Uh, it does need explanation. But aside from that, the film itself is, and in many ways, explains itself. Now, there are other complex issues that I can get into. And I'll try to do that in some greater detail in this 50th anniversary season what it is exactly that we're looking at here is this man or beast is it humanity is it primate is it or perhaps it is what it is those explanations are out there but you got to get over the stumbling blocks you got to get over the what what sends you back to the beginning over and over again about this film and so now that the film is in some of its best form that that's it's ever been in in 50 years and you can see things that are going on in it perhaps maybe you can step a little ahead of, of that that endless cycle of of believing the film three days a week and disbelieving it the other. Maybe perhaps resting on Sunday. No, this film deserves better than that. It's It's believable any day of the week, including Sundays. So what I want to do is to try to put it where it belongs. And then experts can do their job. If there are any experts in this, I think there are. I think there's a lot more known about it than you would believe. And and even yours truly knows a whole lot more about it than I did when I started. And what I'm looking at here is a, a fantastic thing. It's a... Uh, but it's not exactly what you think it might be. Anyway, we'll get into that at a later time. And I thank you for your time. There will be more.